So recently I had a question from a customer asking how could they uh, record a custom part number into each price, press cycle on the Festo Servo Press. Let's say that they have uh, different part numbers flowing through a conveyor and then they scan each part number, they acquire a string of characters with uh, from that part number or from that part, and then they want to store it, store that, that string of characters along with that uh, with that press cycle, right? So there's a logging functionality on the servo press. So they wanted to store that as well. So uh, the approach for this uh, that I'm suggesting in this case, it's going to be by using the variables and I'll show you how to do that. So first of all, let me go back to, in this case, I'm going to be testing this with codices. <clears throat> And uh, before we jump into codices, I want to explain what I'm doing here. So on the servo press, there is a file. For the servo press, there is a file. Let me see, page number nine. So there is a file that's called yjkp object uh, directory, right? So on this file, you can see all of, the, all of the different objects that are available for reading, writing, or reading only. And in this case, there there are some objects called variables and there are a hundred of these, right? So you can see here variable one to 10 and then there's an index and sub index that you can use to read or write in this case. This is read or write, right? Of course, there are some other ones that are only read, like read only in this case, but variables are read and write. So we're going to be using the variables. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna use three to show the concept, uh, but you can use uh, as many as you want up to 100. So let me show you how I'm suggesting we approach this problem. So let's say that what the customer wants to do is they want to read this code. Uh, let's say they scan the code and it's a three character code. And in this case, I'm going to do three different ones. So the first one is going to be SA1 so it will look something like this, right? SA, oh, SA1. So that would be the first one. And then the second one would be SB2 and then SC3. And I just created three different ones to show that there's actually a change in the program. Um, but yeah, I mean, this can be product uh, one, two, three and, and so on, right? Different, different strings up to 100, up to 100 characters because we're gonna be using the variables for this in this case. So. For example, on the first one, SA1, I'm going to be using three variables, one for each character, right? And since the variables are um, are represented in the servo press as, as floating or reals, if you read the manual, you'll see, actually, let me bring that document back uh, here. So it says that it is multiplied by 100. So you'll see 0.001. So if I go to my ASCII table and I want to send a, a set an S, so I look at my ASCII table here and I say, okay, what's the value of an S? So I look for the S and then I say, okay, here's the S right here. And the decimal value for that is 83, right? But the way that the variables work is by multiplying by 100. So now I know that I have to multiply that variable that value by 100, so it gives me 8,300 or 8,300. It's the same thing for A and 1 in this in this first pass. And same thing for this and same thing for this. So the next level that I have here is when I'm doing this on the program, I'm going to actually, I'm actually going to have to split the bytes. So what I did here is I basically split this value, 8,300, I split it into, into four bytes. And, uh, and then I'm going to be writing each byte independently. So that you can see, the reason why I'm doing that is because each variable, um, in this case, each, each variable is gonna be taking uh, four bytes, right? So now um, um, I'm going to be using two of those bytes for each character. All right, hopefully this is not too confusing, but uh, this is basically the, the way that I'm suggesting that we approach this this problem in this case. So now if we jump into codices, how are we going to do this? Um, so the first thing that I'm going to show you here is, of course, I have my function blocks for connect. Uh, 
another one for read and read write object. I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining those because that's not the main focus of this video. But in case that you don't know which ones they are, which one which ones those are, um, you'll see them on these kind of documentation, right? Description of host function blocks in codices, and you see FB connect, and then if you scroll down, you'll see the other one, FB read write object. So you can read the different variables there. Okay, so now the first thing that I'm going to do, uh, just to show the concept of reading and reading and writing the variables, is show you the manual process. So in this case, let me see, let me pull up my object here, my object uh, directory. In this case, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to connect, and I'm going to connect in acyclic mode because I'm going to transfer uh, some variables. Uh, oh, this is in stop right now. So I got to run my PLC. And now, oops, let me make this OK. So now I enabled that block, and it's running in acyclic mode. So now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to close this, and I'm going now I'm going to open that function block for read and write object, right? And I want the first thing that I want to do is I want to read um, for example, I want to read the variable, all of the variables from one to 10. So this is an index number 2300 hex. So what is 2300 hex? We open the calculator and then we type in 2300 hex and that gives me a decimal 8,960. So I type in on the index, why on the index? Because it explains here, this is the index for this, right? So what was the number? Uh, 8960. So I type in 8960 on the index. And then the sub-index, I don't have to worry about that now because this is set to 0 for the variables 1 to 10. So variables 1 to 10, I can leave that to 0. What is the data type for that uh, object? The data type is. Uh, Unsigned double integer. So we go in here and then I can double click in here and type in, ta click on that one. There is a numerical value for that. You can look that on the documentation. What else do I need to do? Uh, because I'm reading, um, I don't have to specify anything else. Oh, I'm missing this one. I'm going to be reading multiple. Um, multiple values because this is this has one to ten variables, right? So variables one, two, three, four, etc. So I, I selected multi there and then I'm going to write or force those. So debug and then uh, control F7. From now on I'm going to be using the shortcuts just so you know. So control F7 and I write I write that and then I read and I should be able this should be this done bit should be true. Or if I don't have any errors, and if there is an error, this is going to be true, this x error. So let's try it. Right, and then I get it done. Be I think that as of now, I don't have any values. Oh, actually, I do have because I was doing some tests. But so right now, I do have some values here. Let's say that we wanted to read another one, which we know it's empty. Let's say variables 90, uh, actually 11 to 20, for example, which would be the next number, 2301 in hex. So 2301, 2301. So 8961, 8961, Control F7, and then make this true. And you see, this is empty, right? I, uh, the first value here, 44, this is explained here. This is the, the default value. But anyways, so this is empty because I'm reading now variables 11 to 20. This was just to show you that it is reading. So I'm going to bring it back to 8960, which is um, the 2300 hex, right? So make this false and then read again. Okay, perfect. So now you know how to read using these variables, right? Now how to write. Um, if you wanted to write, the only thing that you change here is you change this to write. We are still writing multiple um, uh, um, objects. We're still writing to the same index and the same sub-index, the same data type. 
But now I have to specify the length of the data that I'm going to be writing. And the length of the data is 44. So now I can I can type in 44, force it, or not force it, but write, write those values. And then here, I have to specify which data I'm going to be writing, right? So if you noticed, the data that I'm reading starts from bytes five for the first variable. So that's what I'm going to do here. And actually, let me do that again so you see the difference. Read, and then here you see the data starts from byte 5, 108 right there. So I'm just going to change these two just so you know. I'm going to set it to 1 and 2 just so you see the difference there. So false, change these to right, and then um, what was I going to do? Oh, this. I was going to set it to 1 and this one to 2, right? Force those and then right uh right yeah now if i want to make sure that this was written i can go down here and I, you'll see that this done bit is true if there was an error i will get this uh, set to true it, it might be possible that you get an error if you didn't specify the correct information here for example when i was testing i sometimes i forgot to specify the length uh, then i will get this error right so right now it is done um, let's take a look at the data that we wrote by looking at this array of data here. And now let's switch this back to read and then make that true. Oops, let me see, false and true. Oh, what happened here? Uh, let's see, did I? No, yeah, I think I, I wrote it to the wrong I think I, I I wrote this to the read instead of the write. So let's let's do this again. One and two, and I, I gotta make sure that this is data to be written. Okay. So and then switch this to write, and then write, and then I see one and two. I see the done bit here. Okay, so that's good. I can now make this false. Change this to read and open this one so I can see what's going on and then make this true. So now you see the difference here and all of the other things uh, were deleted because everything was set to zero when I wrote, right? So now you see that I'm reading and writing to um, an, an object. All right, perfect. The reason why I wanted to show you that is because I created a sequence that does this automatically and I do this uh, three times, right? So I have this program here and I'm going to try to explain it really quickly. So basically what I do is um, I force this bit to write. Uh, I, I go into this case uh, statement and then I, I switch my communication mode to acyclic. I check that it, there is connection. I check that the actual communication mode is acyclic. After doing that, then I do exactly what I just showed you uh, manually. I do it here. So I set the read multi, or actually I set it to write, which is one. Multi, uh, multi objects, I set which, which index, which um, not sub index because there's none that I'm using in this case, but I set the data type and then the data link to be written. And then what I do is because, because I want to see a change in data, I, I run, I have this other case statement here just to run three different cycles. So during the first cycle, I'm going to write a, this value, so an S, by by uh, writing an, an 8300, right? So I write an S, an A, and a 1. If I go back to the first uh, the Excel file that I showed you at the beginning, that those are the values that I wanted to write first, S, A, and 1. So let me hide this. So here's my S, here's the A, and here's the 1. And that's how I do it. I just split the these values into two bytes, and I do this three times, right? Then I, after I'm done with that, I have another counter just to make sure that I reset these three times and I start again. Uh, and that's about it. I mean, it, it, it really just takes three different steps to write. Then after doing this writing, I also, after I'm done with the writing, I also, um, what I do I, is I start a read sequence. So on the read sequence, I jump into this other case statement and what I'm doing here is I'm basically doing most of this is exactly the same as the right uh, above. 
so this one on above but the main difference here is i changed this so i set this to zero which is reading uh and i leave all, all of this is the same actually so i leave all of that uh, i set this to read and then i execute the function block the read and write object and then the the only thing that i'm doing is i'm doing everything backwards so now i'm i'm, I'm unpacking the actually i'm packing the, the bytes i'm packing them back into a word and then i convert that word into an ascii value um so that ascii value gives me the s the a and the one and then what i do is i use this concat function to just join join the s a one just for me to read easily right so i'm going to show you this how i do this here and again this is just the sequence in a nutshell um, so how do I do it is I just toggle this bit here. So make this true. And then you'll see the, the S char string here. So make that true S a one. So that's my first uh, string. And then the second one should be S B two. So let's execute this again. S B two S C three. And then it goes back to S a one. All right, perfect. So it seems like that is working. Now I'm going to leave it as SA1 for now because the next step that I want to show you is I want to actually run a sequence on the on a servo press that I have here with me and I want to show you something. So let me I'm going to open a file. Just give me one second. Um, so I have this folder. I have this folder where I'm logging the results. So I'm going to delete this one, which was a previous test, and I'm going to leave that folder um, going to leave that folder empty, right? So there's my folder, and it is empty. I'm going to put on another screen that I have here. Um, so the first thing that I, I'm going to do is I'm going to now switch to I'm going to switch my press to um, cyclic mode. How do I do this? That I go to my F uh, function block connect and I change this to cyclic, right? Cyclic, and then I write that value. So now it's running on cyclic and then you can see there are some values changing, so that's good. Okay, so now this is running on cyclic. How do I know it is running on cyclic? Because now I can go into one of these function blocks, for example, status, and now I can enable this function block status and now I see some information, for example, actual force, actual velocity, it's standstill, so it's not moving, and the actual position. So, okay, that's good. I have some communication. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to show you this. Um, I'm going to log in into the servo press web visualization because here, I'm going to enable via the PLC, I'm going to enable this FTP server, okay? So I cannot do it from here because right now I have the control with my PLC, but once I toggle a bit, you'll see it here, you'll see that that's going to change. So right now, again, right now this is disabled. You can see this red, so it is not running. What I'm going to do is you can enable that via the PLC by using this function block system settings. So I'm going to enable that function block. And then there's a bit here that's called log FTP server. So I'm going to make that true. Once I make that true, I'm going to bring this back. This is, uh, this is enabled now. Okay. So I can, I can leave that to true. Now I'm going to go to my press control and I'm going to enable this block. Now, the next, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the system. So now it's telling me here, the system is enabled. Actually, let me disable it so you can see the switch there. Right now it's disabled right here. I'm going to enable it again. So now the system is enabled. I'm going to home just so you can see the transition. Okay, so right now my system is homing. I can see it moving and it stands still again. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this program right now by clicking on start press process. So I'm going to make this true. Actually, let me see what is going on here. 
is this program loaded program let me load this program okay program number one is loaded and then start press process no it would not go let me see what else am i missing here I have to make these files I have these files okay start press process no uh let me test this a little okay uh yeah i i did find my problem the problem was that i was still in here and on on this screen and it doesn't allow you to uh execute a program because it thinks that you're still changing something here in the configuration so i'm going to exit this and go back to program or operation it doesn't matter as long as i'm not in any of the commissioning um uh pages so okay back there and where was i oh yeah i was going to start the oops i was going to start the press process so i'm going to do that uh let's see so now the press is going and you'll see here uh actually down here it's moving right actual force you see some changes there and i actually see the several press moving here so that's good it did something not only it did something I also it also generated a file in my computer so it transferred an FTP file or sorry it transferred a file a log file via FTP what's in this file I'm going to open it so you can see this file includes a lot of different information from that press process that you made so uh, if if the press process was okay which program you were running and so on right but right now we're not going to focus on all of these different things one of the things that we want to focus on is these variables so let's take a look variables it says zero zero so everything is set to zero right now let's see what happened here i'm going to disable this for now and actually uh, yeah i'm going to disable that for now and i'm going to go back to my fb connect i'm going to switch to acyclic and i'm going to read to see what do i have there so it says right now that everything is empty so let's let's execute my program to write let's see uh, uh where is my counter i'm going to set this to zero so we start fresh uh start right so right now it wrote sa1 let's see if that is true so if i uh maybe read so read okay so it did write sa1 so let's do this let's um go back to fb connect switch this back to cyclic and then go back to our program here um i think i have to reset this um set this back to log ftp server so let me just make sure that it is logging yeah it is logging on the web visualization i see the green the green indicator so i uh, actually i can i can leave this enabled if i want um press control i'm going to enable the function block and then i'm going to enable the system it is already home so i should be able to start this press process let's do that so it is going we open this file so you'll see after it's done it's going to show a new file here there it is so now this is my new file i open this file and let's look at the variables again so look for the variables there so now you see 83 65 and 49 these three 83 65 and 49 uh, this is just showing how I'm how I'm logging this. Of course, you can create your own sequence to decode this 836549. But let's see, 83. If we go to our ASCII table, again, show 83. It's an S. 65 is the next number. A, and then a one, which is a, should be a 49. Here, 49. So let's do. Another one, just the, the next cycle, so you can see again. I'm going to disable this. Start press process, disable this. Uh, I can uh, 
actually I can also go in here and disable that if I wanted to. I switch back to a click and I execute my program again to type, to write SV1. So, ah, sorry, SV2. So now SV2 should be written. So now I can go back and switch this to cyclic. And um, I have to, again, make this true. So this is also written again. So it's logging on my FTP server. I enable this, I enable the system and let's execute that program again. It's exactly the same program. Let's open and see if we see a different. Um, so this was the this was the first one, right? 836549. There's my new file. I'm going to leave this one here so we can see we can compare. So the one on the back is my old one, 8365 and 49. This one over here. Uh, let's look at the new one. Uh, let's look for the variables. Now this one says 8366 and 50. Again, I'm not going to go again through the little details, but if you look, 83, S, 65, actually, I think I am going to go through the details, 66, uh, where's the 66, B, and uh, what's the next next number, 50, which should be 2, here's a 2. So that is a way of creating uh, or playing with the variables to log any any kind of string that you want up to 100 characters using the um, yeah using the variables and the function on the on the servo press and additionally logging this into for your own or, or for your own tracking purposes right uh, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and leave a comment or any questions that you might have thank you very much